I'm gonna make a clicker from The Last of Us in Blender in just four days, and I'm taking you along with me. Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm a Hollywood visual effects artist. I worked on movies from Star Wars to Deadpool to Fantastic Beasts, but now I'm making my own short film based on The Last of Us, and I'm taking you behind the scenes before it's released. We have a scene where the main character gets into a fight with the clicker. I like what we got on set, but part of me just feels like it didn't quite land. I kind of want that, you know, body horror shock effect and something about what we actually captured on set just didn't quite hit it. So I want to make the character digitally. The last time I made a fully digital character was a Bioshock short from years ago. Back then I did everything in Maya and everything about it was pretty slow. It took so long to just kind of even see what your textures really look like in a renderer. And at the end of the day, I just really wasn't happy with the result. And from start to finish, it probably took four weeks just to kind of get that one shot in a good place. I don't really want to go through all that pain again, so I'm trying to see what new options are out there to try. So I'm thinking about using Blender, and I know that sounds pretty weird coming from a professional visual effects standpoint. Uh, it's never really used in any big studio at all. I've only heard of one studio doing it just for some small TV spots and stuff like that. But for kind of a one person crew, it seems like there's so many new advancements that I can really take advantage of. I keep seeing all these amazing improvements that Blender has made over the past, you know, one or two years, and it's a completely different piece of software. So I'm gonna put Blender to the test. I'm gonna try to learn the entire program in just four days and make a clicker asset at the end of it that's feature film quality. If I can do that, I'm gonna use it for the rest of my short. The first thing I did was I did a Blender Guru Donut tutorial. It's pretty basic, but it has all the building blocks to learn every part of the software step by step. So I got the clicker model off of Twitter, of all places. I found someone who had the actual model from the game. It's the exact one you see in the game, but they had none of the textures. So I had to build all that from scratch. Blender can texture stuff. They have a painting mode, but it's not really useful for this. It's, it's a bit too slow. And for a thing like clicker, you need so much real photorealistic detail that I had to go to Substance Painter to actually get it done. This means I had to learn a whole new software, but this one seemed really easy to pick up. So what goes into making a photorealistic asset like this? When you're doing humans or something organic, there's something called subsurface scattering, which really makes a difference. Here's the most basic example. It's just simulating the blood and all that light coming underneath. I'm technically blocking the light, but it's passing through my skin and illuminating like the blood that's underneath. So if you don't have that for something like a clicker, it's just gonna feel off. Blender and Substance have really good tools to deal with this in real time. Another thing is having too perfect of edges. That's kind of the CG look. Everything's super crisp, super clean. So we can do some tricks with displacement maps and normal maps to really give it that, you know, highly detailed feel and break up some of those edges. Another thing is hair, which I've never ever done in CG. We'll give it a try in Blender and see how it works. That's gonna be a big challenge on this one. The other thing is photographic lighting. A lot of people skip this step, but it's one of the most important. So I'm gonna light it like a real cinematographer as best as I can, use some reference images and really give it that horror look. So to start texturing, I'm going to Substance Painter. One of the things that separates professional artists from amateurs is we always, always, always use real life reference. You have an idea of what things look like, but you never really know until you kind of stare at that picture and analyze every little element. For this, there's so much concept art and actual screenshots from the game that it was really easy to collect a bunch. And I also found some real life mushrooms and fungus and stuff like that, and some cracked skin just to really find a, a base it even more in reality because they do kind of cheat some stuff just for the game. I put a little board together in pure ref so I can constantly check back and forth. One of the great things about Substance is Substance Source. It's a library of ready-made materials that you can use in any of your assets. Their library had a ton of organic materials like crusty skin, blood, and even wounds and scars that I can mix into my textures. I can bring them in, adjust the settings, and just mask it in wherever I want it. In Substance, you can use height maps to get some of that displacement layers to break up that edge, so you're actually gonna deform the, uh, the model itself in the final render. This took a lot of back and forth, but ultimately I just kept going between references, little tweaks here and there, adding new colors, and really just trying to find a balance. Once I was pretty happy with it, I brought it back into Blender and started finalizing the shader. Everything looks great in Substance, but it never really matches 100%, so you have to really zoom in and check all the details. When taking the textures into Blender, you can enable the Node Wrangler plugin. That way you can select all your textures that came out of Substance, and Blender will automatically build your shader tree for you. I should mention, when I'm doing a project like this, I'm blasting through YouTube tutorials, going lesson after lesson to learn as much as I can. When learning 3D, there's so much stuff to cover that you're gonna get lost, so it's important to be Googling for help and YouTubing constantly. 
From there, I rigged the asset with Rigify, which is a plugin built into Blender already. Rigging was a real pain. It's really unintuitive, especially for someone like me who doesn't really ever do that. I had some bumps in the road, but luckily there's you know years of Blender questions on the internet, so uh, I went through the help pages and the documentation and was able to figure it out. The last touch was the hair. Blender has a really simple hair emitter system. You select where you want the hair to grow, do some vertex panning, set up a simple hair material, and it looks pretty good out of the box. And now for the lighting. This is one area where I really thought for a test render, I want to see if we can make it look cinematic. A lot of people spend so much time nailing down the texturing, nailing down the modeling, getting that hair shader, trying to get that extra step, but then completely shit the bed on lighting. There's a lot of good resources out there. I know Blender Guru has a five part video series, but for this, I really wanted to find some sort of still from a horror movie that I could base it off of and really try to capture, you know, lighting on set. I never really felt comfortable lighting in CG until I actually kind of saw it happen on set for the short film. Uh, my cinematographer, Kyle, and he had a big camera crew of grips on there. They're actually setting up lights, trying to shape the light on set. Um, part of that is putting up a light and then blocking it off so you're really only getting a tiny edge of it. A lot of those principles I just never really thought of when it came to CG, but watching that or even watching behind the scenes of other movies for you guys uh, is super beneficial to really think of how they're lighting this in the real world and then just simulating that in the program. Hit subscribe if you want to see some of those on-set clips. We took a bunch of behind the scenes footage, we'll be breaking down a lot of it in future videos. For my test render, I wanted to go into some of those horror tropes. One of those classic ideas is underlighting. It gives that feeling of you like putting a flashlight under your face, telling a spooky story out by the campfire. I kind of figured just to justify it for the image, it could kind of be like a flashlight. You see that in The Last of Us a lot. Um, so I kind of tinted it orange too to give it that feel. After that, I wanted it to feel pretty ominous, uh, which usually means a lot of backlighting and keeping parts of the clicker in shadow so you can't see everything. I use this still from Don't Breathe as a reference for a cool color story. I set all the backlights to this green tone to give it a bit of that color contrast. Since this is just for the test render, I really wanted to push the color story since we're not matching the pre-existing footage. This is where the power of Blender came in. I was lighting the scene through the render engine Eevee. It basically acts like a game engine so you can view everything in real time. This really allows you to just focus on the creative side instead of worrying about all the little technical details of rendering. You can create new lights and test it out in real time and it'll match to the final render. I added a few final tweaks, but now that I'm done, it's time to switch over to Cycles to get a photoreal result. Cycles is their ray tracer, which means it will take longer, but it's gonna give you a result that matches the real world. A new thing in Blender is they have denoisers built in. To save you time from getting too technical, it basically just lets you render in less time. It'll smooth out your result while preserving the detail. Normally for a render like this, it'd take about 15 minutes to get an HD frame, but with a denoiser, it took less than two minutes. Now that the render's done, I can push it even further through compositing, which is what I do on Hollywood Films. We want to take that render and now make it look photographic, so I'm going to hop into Nuke. The first thing I did is add a volumetric spotlight behind him. This starts to justify the light and just makes it a bit more dramatic. Then I started to build a particle system. In the game, the clickers are usually found surrounded by fungus in the air, so I wanted to bring that in, but most of all it just makes it look a lot cooler. Lastly are the finishing touches. I want to make this look like it was shot with a real camera, so I want to add in all those little imperfections that you get from that. You get some lens diffusion, film grain, chromatic aberration, a bit of defocus, and all those little tiny details that you get from shooting with a film camera. And that's it. There you have it. A photo real clicker. So, from a visual effects professional standpoint, does Blender hold up? I have to say, absolutely. I was actually blown away by how fast everything was. Going from EV to Cycles, kind of lighting in real time and previewing textures in real time, uh, that was just never a thing you could do, even two years ago, to my knowledge. Uh, and it's just gone so fast. I can just drag and drop lights and instantly tell if I'm gonna like it or not. That sped up my workflow by so much, and I never would have been able to do this in four days if it wasn't for that. Since I kind of rebuilt Blender, even stuff like adding in the hair simulation was such a quick process. It all just feels like everything in the software works together even better than something like Maya. The fact that this is free is crazy to me. Anyone can pick this up. It's the basic tools of every 3D software and you can just really hit the ground running. Just through a few basic tutorials, it was super simple to get up to speed to build a character like this in no time at all. I'm glad you could follow along and I hope you kinda got some tips for your own CG renders or it's just kinda interesting. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this. I'm gonna be breaking down so much more in future videos, more about cinematography, writing, casting, 
all the post-production stuff, future visual effects breakdowns. We'll be doing it all up to the final release of the film and after to really pull back the curtain so you can kind of see exactly how we did this. So subscribe for more.